Yo, what is going on, Comfy Gang? It's your boy, Comfy Neat. And today, um, I want to talk about something, I don't know, that's probably relevant to a lot of Neats. And um, yeah, so I guess a lot of people who are Neat are probably wondering, you know, why Neats don't feel guilty. And I guess for being Neat, because I think there's a lot of uh, perceptions, you know, maybe I guess some rightfully um, had that um, needs are basically leeches, leeching off their parents, leeching off society. But um, there are numerous things that I do and think that help me, you know, cope with that sort of half truth or truth, I guess, that needs are leeches in society and that I'm basically being a giant leech. So um, I'm going to be talking about the many ways in which I rationalize my neatdom. I rationalize being neat and how I, uh, I guess, how I cope with the fact that I'm a leech and how I manage not to feel guilty about my current situation. Well, well, I'll always feel a little bit guilty, but there are ways or things that I do to reduce this guilt. And yeah. I'll be talking about that. So um, one thing, I guess, because at the crux of it, you know, the idea of like leeching off of your parents seems to be like a financial thing. Um, I think one thing I do is that I try to limit my financial footprint as much as possible and um, one of the ways I do this is, you know, in my previous video, I it was a cooking video using leftover ingredients. And in reality, that is a lot of the stuff that I make. Or if it's not leftovers, you know, it's stuff that um, I'm, you know, using that I bought at the supermarket. Basically, not eating out is the big thing because, you know, when you calculate the cost of what it takes to make a dish from scratch versus eating out it's pretty much like one to five like you're basically paying like a 500 percent markup on the food you eat outside and where i live the food isn't even that good so that definitely helps things but um you know oftentimes my parents will be out and they'll ask me if i want anything and i'll say no and um well firstly they tend to have leftovers anyway, anyway from that stuff, so I'm perfectly willing to eat that. Or a lot of the time what I do is that I'll try and improvise and you know turn those leftovers into um, you know other dishes using what's in the fridge already that's leftover, or I guess fresh from like the supermarket, like rice, noodles, you know, vegetables and you know. There's a million things you can make with leftovers. And when you understand that at the end of the day, like meat is just meat where regardless of where, where it was cooked and you know, you're not exactly like cooking for some like Michelin star restaurant. You can make some pretty good tasting stuff from just leftovers. So kind of rambling, but that's what I do. Um, I just cook up random stuff with leftovers and I feel like because it's left over, um, let me check the time. Um, because it's left over, um, basically it's stuff that wasn't spent for me. It's like their leftovers. So it's like, they're not really spending anything extra on me. Like they're basically, um, yeah, it's like, it's food that would have been thrown in the trash can anyways, because I think that's how it is in most households and I end up using that and consuming it. Obviously, it's not the most healthy because, you know, beggars can't be cheesers. I have to hope that whatever they get, there's some sort of protein or like, you know, it's lean, it's not too oily, but oftentimes it is, but it's whatever. Like At the end of the day, it's really calories in, calories out that matters the most. And um, yeah, so there's that. I basically, yeah, cook random crap, cook at home, cook by myself. I think it saves a ton of money. Eating out even once a day probably ends up costing like 20 to $30 a day. So by not doing that, 
I feel like on food, I'm probably spending like maybe five to ten dollars or even less sometimes if it's like using leftovers completely. So it's like, yeah, it makes me feel good about myself that I'm kind of reducing that burden. And um, aside from this, um, you guys may have noticed that or have been wondering how I afford all my supplements because, you know, I am um, quite like vitamin pilled. So um, I, you know, these supplements, they're not super expensive, but they do add up. I'd say maybe it costs like, well, if you're including the ashwagandha, which is not exactly cheap, it's like 30 to 50 a month because some of these other things like I, I like buy, it's like they last three months, but they cost like 20 to $30. So it's like 10, like seven to $10 a month. So, um, yeah, um, how I afford that is that basically, oh, this is bad. Some people not, might not consider me a neat after saying this, but I do have a tiny, tiny, just, just a tiny, you know, like not nothing huge. I'm not, I don't think I'm a wagey, like, but basically, okay. I have a tiny bit of income and um basically it's just like i do my aunt like uh i help her out at her work i help you know help her like file stuff i guess i can't really go into detail as to what it is for doxing and for other purposes but um yeah i help her out and she you know pays me a little bit of money on the side and um, this can range anywhere from 100 to 200 a month. It's nothing massive. I can't go out and buy like nice clothes and stuff like that, but it does help me feel a little bit better when I do stuff like buy the occasional Switch game that's on sale, um, pay for my like supplements or whatever. And, you know, sometimes I'll go over what I earn maybe like buy like anywhere from like 50 to a hundred dollars. But, um, I feel like, uh, sorry if you're somebody upstairs. Um, but yeah, I, yep. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna be talking a lot quieter you now. Um, definitely makes me feel, you know, a lot better that I am able to at least support myself a tiny bit on, you know, all the non-essential things like games and supplements, which I don't really need to survive, but I just feel like taking them, um, you know, helps me feel better, helps me feel a little bit more in shape. And um, aside from that, I do things like, uh, I'll bring it closer to me. I try and like help her out, help out around the house and stuff. Um, and like, I don't know, just do little things. Like I'm not saying like I do the chores all the time for the, for the good boy points, but you know, I help out do the dishes sometimes like help clean up, help organize things. Um, and I keep my room clean. I mean, I don't like, pee and piss jugs and like get my mom scream yell at my mom to bring me a plate of tendies and uh sweet and sour sauce or whatever don't yell at them um so i think at least i'm okay in that regard um i i guess sort of take care of myself although like my parents do cook dinner and i do eat it so i'm thankful for that I just hear somebody, uh, sorry. If I like, yeah, I just want them hearing this stuff. It's embarrassing. Um, and aside from that, I, um, what else, what else? Aside from that, I'll just have like, you know, 
I think a bunch of different trains of thought or like ideas that I sort of like adhere to or like resonate with, like the whole idea that, you know, you know, life is inherently meaningless. There's no inherent meaning in the universe. That kind of helps me in a sense because um, it makes me feel better about being neat because it's the whole nihilism aspect of, you know, being neat. It's like, yeah, I could sit here and lay down and rot and, you know, that would be perfectly fine. I really don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And on the flip side, there's a whole like absurdist part of it where it's like, you know, the universe is meaningless. Therefore, you're free to make your own meaning and by extension, you know, choose things that are meaningful to you. Um, you know, I think that's where that's that's what resonates with me more. And um, I try and, you know, and by extension, I think it's important to like, yeah, what I said earlier, I'm, I'm rambling like, yeah, just doing things that are meaningful. Therefore, if I were to have a job, you know, if I were to, you know, work a nine to five, I wouldn't have the opportunity to at least attempt to do things that actually matter to me. And, you know, who knows, maybe this will pay off in the future. Even with how inconsistent I am, maybe eventually it'll pay off and I'll actually be able to do something with it, you know, make some money or not even that, just like be good at it and have people appreciate it and just more importantly, appreciate, actually like the stuff that I make or, you know, do. And yeah, so there's that part of it. It's like, yeah, like, um, yeah, just do the things that you like. Like, therefore, that's in like another, I guess, way I like rationalize not having a job and staying is that I have like a lot of free time, a lot of opportunities to practice and um, work on things that actually matter to me. And I think that's important. And um, aside from that, Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. Um, if you're wondering why I cut the video, it's cause, well, I heard somebody downstairs and got freaked out. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to wait till they left. And um, while I was waiting, I fell asleep and now I've just woken up. Um, but anyways, continuing on, the last reason why I, um, I guess, or how I rationalize being neat is, well, I tell myself that this is just going to be a phase and that it's going to be over um, pretty soon. I'm going to get out of it. And this is just, you know, part of my development and whatever things like so I tell myself stuff like that. And I also think that, you know, when I'm no longer neat, I'm going to, you know, pay back my parents for all the time that they've, you know, I guess all the money, all, all the time that they've allowed me to, I guess, basically you know, be a shut in, be like, I don't know, alone here, you know, quote unquote, leeching off of them financially. And, you know, I tell myself things like, yeah, I'm going to be successful or, you know, I don't think I'm stupid. I think I'm capable of being somewhat successful, like financially at least. So I think when that happens, I'm going to try and like pay them off I, and, um, you know, compensate them for, you know, allowing me to be like this for such a long time. I think at my age, you know, regardless of their faults, regardless of the fact that they, you know, have made mistakes that have made me the way I am, I think that it would be a little bit ungrateful of me to not still be thankful for them allowing me to stay here. And you know, this is obviously according to like Western standards, like there's no expectation to kick people out when you're in Asia, but it's like, yeah, you know, they could have kicked me out anyways and they didn't. So that's something, yeah, you know, just thinking stuff like that, like, oh, being thankful for it. And that's probably my own way of coping too, like make myself feel like a better person. Like, oh, at least I'm not ungrateful for the fact that my parents are letting me stay here like most needs obviously you know i'm kind of just you know trying to analyze myself objectively you know um and well yeah i guess thinking stuff like that 
Um, yeah, it helps me cope with being neat. Anyways, uh, I'm probably gonna end the video now. It's, it's a bad idea shooting in the morning because well, I'm all paranoid about people listening into what I'm saying here, overhearing me because I talk kind of loud. And yeah, um, I feel like I'm gonna end the video now, try and shoot some better quality content. I'm also starting to realize that if I don't shoot a video every day or I take long gaps in between them, it really makes it hard to speak properly and you know, come up with ideas that make sense together on the fly. So keep saying this, but I'm gonna be trying to upload daily, at least like every other day. But anyways, uh, this is Comfy Neat signing out.